We're back on another Tuesday. I've got the day here to do a little bit of work, so I've got plans to do quite a few things that I've kind of been putting off. I believe the issue with my heater is relating to the sensor that detects where the blend door is located. So in the previous episode, you saw us get the heater box out of the car, which was way more work than I ever anticipated, just with how difficult the placement of those heater hoses were and using the spring clamps. Once we got that off, you saw that we removed the blend door actuator, and now that's what I've torn into. It's not a serviceable part, according to Toyota. Um, I have the uh, manual here, and I'm going to go through some of that with you. Uh, for the troubleshooting, it's the electric wiring diagram uh, that Toyota released for the Supra. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what uh, that looks like, where it comes from, and uh, talk about some of the issues I was having with it. So here's a look at everything kind of broken down. I split the case in half, which you have to be very gentle with because these clips over here, they're not like the spring clips uh, that kind of like are bendable it'll just like break right off. So this one is like barely hanging on by a thread, but I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to that and see if I can strengthen that up again. I plan to seal this case just with a really thin bead of silicone. I've got, I bought the RTV version, but you know, I'm gonna need basically none of it. So um, the other things that I have for cleaning this, so basically these fingers here, they get gummed up. And this is the sensor, so when you have increased resistance, uh, or at least the way that I understand it, is that the gunky buildup on here, which comes from right here, uh, that is what makes it difficult for this motor to sense where the actual blend door is located in the box, which then causes issues. So they do have a procedure in the Toyota manual here. So this is the way that you're supposed to check the resistance to see how this motor works. That's where I ran into problems. Um, I talked with my uncle and he actually is like always into electronic repair and understands a lot of things like this where I really don't. And he told me that I should try to use this uh, CRC contact cleaner. So I'm going to use a little bit of this and I'm going to clean off these little fingers down here that provide that door position sensor. He told me that I should also clean this with some alcohol, which I have some alcohol wipes for that, um, and just be as gentle as possible with this stuff because they're just delicate electronic components. So yeah, gonna clean the fingers with a toothbrush, with my toothbrush and the contact cleaner. And then he told me to apply some dielectric grease, which I'm gonna do that. And that's gonna go on this area right here where these fingers ride on. Uh, I already tested with the power probe. I applied power. The electric motor in here is perfectly fine. It does still move everything, but what I was told um, is uh, that because it cannot detect the position, that's the issue. Toyota doesn't sell this part anymore, so it's not like I can just go buy a new one because honestly, I'd happily go buy a new one for two or 300 bucks. But I feel like this is something that people are going to run into more as these cars age and more people restore them. So, you know, I kind of wanted to, to document what I'm doing here. So I'm going to get to work, kind of pulling this all apart and get it reassembled. And then we're going to use the multimeter to test and see if the resistance matches uh, what this diagnostic procedure does. Um, so we'll go from there. What I'm going to do is use some of this contact cleaner and uh, a toothbrush here. We're going to see if we can just kind of delicately wipe off that part. Okay, and those are looking nice and shiny. Look at all the stuff I actually got off of there. I'm kind of surprised. It, uh, like I said, when I pulled this open and saw the uh, condition of it, I was sort of like, meh, I don't see anything. And I also had the motor working, so, you know, it seemed like everything was going to be okay. All right, and then this side of things, I'm going to take a little contact cleaner too. Squeeze out any of the extra alcohol so we just have only what's necessary on there. I just want it to be damp, sort of. And then 
I'm just going to lightly clean this surface here. And then I was told that I'm just supposed to put enough on here to make this like shiny, basically. Um, and you can actually see where that material has come from. I don't know if this angle works, but there's those, these four fingers that drag across here. And you can see marks in this like black shielding almost. So it's dragged that across. Um, and I don't know if that's our issue or not, but we're going to find out. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just the tiniest amount of dielectric grease on this area over here. I've got this uh, mega can of the CRC stuff. Uh, I was told to get all of that. Honestly, I'm going to start with just the smallest amount possible. I'll get a nice clean glove, put it on that way. My hands are nice and sweaty, so you know that makes it tough to put on. All right, and get just the smallest amount of this here. I don't even know if that's too much. Well, like I said, my uncle told me just to get this part shiny, essentially. And so that's what I've done. So I think that's it. So now we can go to reassembly testing. What I want to do is I this thing's barely hanging on by a thread, so... I'm going to get some super glue that I have and I'm going to try and get it in that void and then put it back in there so that, you know, that just doesn't fall off. And then I'm also going to run uh, like a, the thinnest bead ever, like with a toothpick um, of silicone here, because with the heat cycling of the heating and cooling system, this doesn't have any sort of sealant in it from the factory. So it just kind of clamps together. Um, but my uncle told me I should uh, do just, just a, Small amount of sealant uh, is cheap insurance, and then if I ever need to go back in here, which hopefully is never, um, then I can just use a razor, cut that out, then I should be good to go. So I'm going to go grab some glue, and that should complete this stage of the process here. Okay, so I've got everything back together. I ended up gluing that one tab, but everything looks pretty good. So the other thing that I can try here while it's on the actual box, is I can try to actually actuate this door. And this, I just go over to this pin here. Okay. Then I should be able to reverse it. Okay, so that opens and closes as it should, which we have no issues with. So there's still plenty more testing to do, but otherwise I think I'm happy with where we're at. We got good resistance readings uh, for this actuator that we serviced. It functions. We know the electric motor works because we applied power to it and it moves the, physically moves the doors. So that means beyond that, we're going to be worried about like a signal issue of some sort, and that'll be all through diagnostics um, in the service manual. So pretty happy so far and we'll have to see where we go from here, but just wanted to give you guys kind of an in-depth look at those actuators. And you know, if we can revive this one, that means that more people will be able to continue to just service these as opposed to pitching them, finding additional used ones that you might just have problems with too, um, because they don't make them. So we're going to have to make them work. So thanks for watching, and uh, if this was helpful, or if you know anything more about these systems, um, obviously I'm not an expert about this. Um, I just know some people that know some things. So uh, if you know you have a take on it, or you think you saw something that I did that wasn't exactly right, just let me know, and uh, I'd love to hear it. So thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll show you more stuff like this and. A lot cooler stuff with Supras. I know this isn't like the most thrilling thing, but a necessary evil, unfortunately. So thanks for watching.